Chelsea legend Didier Drogba has spoken on manager Maurizio Pochettino and the Chelsea squad, the players, the project. <laughs> Of course, Chelsea underperforming massively this season. We've all seen the stats, the comparison of the points total under Graham Potter last season being the same as this season. Of course, the circumstances are not the same. We've spoken about this at length. In fact, if you haven't watched my previous upload where I reflect on the reports coming out of The Athletic talking about tactics, squad players maybe regretting signing long deals at Chelsea. Mmm, interesting insights there, but not necessarily all bad, but mostly bad. Anyway, I would urge you guys to check out that video if you are yet to watch it. But today we're talking about Didier Drogba's comments about Pochettino, the Chelsea squad, could anyone be doing better? And I also want to spend some time and talk about Jose Mourinho again. Pause. In fact, I don't want to spend some time talking about it. I feel like football therapy sometimes is therapy for me. And I feel like I actually need to talk about it to figure out if I'm the only crazy one here. I've already spoken about it on my Instagram and I'd urge you guys to follow me if you want to get interactive and do the lives with me at Football Yannick on Instagram and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on YouTube. If you do want to subscribe, you're certainly welcome to join the gang, the community. We're nearly at 180,000 subscribers, which is incredible of course. So if you like the content, do consider subscribing, hitting the bell notifications icon and dropping a like on the video to let me know that you like it. Let's try and get a whole bunch of likes. Alright then, let's get into it. Sky Sports Premier League have tweeted a video of Didier Drogba being interviewed talking about the current state of Chelsea Football Club. He speaks on the young, inexperienced squad and he speaks about Maurizio Pochettino. Now interestingly, he's coming to defend the Chelsea manager, saying things such as Pochettino is doing the best job possible. He knows the league very well, everyone knows what he has done. He then goes on to describe the squad. Before you go, what the hell is he on about? Chelsea are doing really badly. And didn't he not so long ago say those famous words, I do not recognize my club anymore. Yes, that's all true. And maybe remains in the same position. I do not recognize my club anymore. But maybe he's also thinking, this is just where we are now. This is the current state of play. This is the situation. Now it's important probably that I take a moment here to say to you, I don't have a firm position on this. I'm seriously underwhelmed with many facets of Pochettino's coaching personally, but I still understand in theory and in profile while he's appropriate for this project, this, and this is a salient point here, investment that Chelsea have made, an investment in turbulent times in terms of financial rules where the money you spend, you've got to make sure it's worth it. So I'm not massively sold on Pochettino, and I've kind of always been firm on that. I wasn't like, wow, we've signed my dream manager. I was like, uh, okay. But the truth is, I look at alternatives, I look at everyone else, and I'm trying to think, what's the deal here? Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to think, who could do better, and who'd want to come in now, and is there any point sacking this guy? Look, look, look. The fact remains, if the players don't want to play for him, he's got to go today, as far as I'm concerned, but as long as they're all together to a degree and there's no alternatives uh, out there, and we've already tried the, you know, vibes until the end of the season, last season, when things aren't going well, and, you know, that was an experiment that proved it was not a good idea. So Drogba quite passionately defended the state of affairs at Chelsea. He said, look, the good Chelsea teams, and I'm paraphrasing here, by the way, but when I joined Chelsea, these guys were 25, 26, 27. We're all in our prime, joining into a good team, ready to go. He said, ultimately, these guys are just kids. They're 20, 21, 22, maybe 23, and that small amount of difference in terms of age profile is gargantuan in terms of, you know, because they're not experienced Premier League operators anyway. He didn't mention that, Drogba. This is me adding that. Of course, he, I, I agree with him. They're being young and unexperienced and need time. But the fact is, as well, they've not been youngsters that have been brought from across the league. Of course, a good example of that is Cole Palmer, who wasn't even getting that much game time at City, but he was so, like acquainted in, you know, to the Premier League and its landscape, and he's done really well. Of course, Cole Palmer's just that guy as well, but it's an example. So Drogba says, yeah, give it a few years and these kids will be, you know, much, much better, and people will be saying, wow, this is the best Chelsea team ever, and golden generation, etc., etc. Now, it might seem reductive, but I did find it very, very interesting, because Drogba does love Chelsea, hence those lines, I don't recognise my club anymore. 
But maybe he has an insight. Maybe he certainly has a lot more experience than we do. Personally, football's a game of opinions for fans, but I defer my opinion to Didier Drogba. I feel like this guy knows a lot more about Chelsea and football than I do and certainly loves Chelsea as much as I do. So if he's saying, look, this is just the way it is, no one else could do better at the moment, then fair play. But again, I want to reiterate, I'm by no means a Pochettino apologist. I'm not happy with the way things are going. And to be honest, if Pochettino is not managing Chelsea in 18 months' time, I have absolutely no issue with that whatsoever. What I do have an issue with is recognising how right now things are really turbulent, things are really bad, and the... You know, the ideas that we're investing a lot of money into um, haven't started well. So I'm wary and mindful about ways of making that better, but also ways of making that much worse. Look, Chelsea have played okay at times this season. We played well against Liverpool at home, you know, Man City, Arsenal, Tottenham away, and some other games in between. There have been some good performances, but f- few and far between. Yes, 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 there's been injuries, etc. But ultimately, what there is really, really cause for concern in terms of just performances in between. Maybe that can be put down to what Didier Drogba was talking about there with the inexperience and simply just needing time with each other. Maybe it's just not the best performance from a manager, from a coach, dealing with granted what probably is the hardest job, <laughs> or one of the hardest jobs in English football at the moment, with the expectation, the mix of a massive amount of footballing culture from young players coming from around the world trying to blend together um, you know with mass media scrutiny and huge wages and uh, sort of transfer fees at least it's tough so I do want to speak a little bit about Jose Mourinho because people think that is the solution now as we get into this segment of the video I would like to assert the fact that I respect every opinion and that I really like Jose Mourinho I think he's one of the best gifts to football we've ever had as uh, fans of the game. He's had some incredible um, results in his career. I I actually think he's probably more exciting in box office than Guardiola because of what he did with Porto, uh, the treble with Inter, these kind of like kind of underdog stories to a degree, uh, to a degree with Inter. Of course, he uh, well, three Premier Leagues with Chelsea. I think the first time around it was very impressive with those two uh, yeah, titles he won with Chelsea. Um, you know, even Real Madrid. I feel like he lost his spark a bit at Real Madrid, but he still got... Was he the first to get 100 points? He knocked Pep off his perch playing anti-football. And, you know, it's just box office. It's fun. I loved it. I don't have any particular love for Jose Mourinho. I must be honest here, because historically, he's a, he's a legend... And an important figure to Chelsea Football Club, I've said it before, he's not our Wenger, he's not our Ferguson, simply because he's about himself, he's not about Chelsea, which is fine. It's totally fine, that's his right. He always dreamed of getting the Man United job, he was fuming when, uh, after Ferguson retired, Moyes got it, because he always wanted it. He would have, the truth is, I've got it on good authority, there's a few times he would have just ditched Chelsea for jobs he preferred. It's just the way it is. He loved Chelsea, but he loved himself more. To the point where he said, oh, I would never consider ever managing Tottenham. As soon as he got a whiff of their, like, you know, could pay him a lot of money and had a big stadium and it could, like, feed his ego, he ran off to Tottenham. Look, I don't want to sound like proper Chelsea man here, and maybe I'm being a bit old school, but for me, that's just an absolute no-no. But you, you cannot do that. So, emotionally, there's love lost. I do think he's a destructive character, as is the narrative of Jose Mourinho everywhere he goes but I still love him as a character I love the fact how he won uh, the conference league with Roma I think it's a great great story and the Roma fans love him for it but the truth is he's just been sacked by Roma for underperforming with a massive wage budget so uh, he's he's long been realized as not a forward-thinking good coach anymore and he's he himself has admitted like his methods that made him so successful are kind of dated. I think he did it recently on the John Obia podcast, pretty much saying things are different now, and, you know, the way I used to do things aren't really working like they did. He's just not this good, innovative coach anymore. And people will be like, well, we don't need that right now. We just need the passion and the, the standards and all this and the other. Even if that is the case and it works fleetingly, it comes with so much damage, detrimental destruction that puts you backwards and we cannot afford to go backwards. Jose Mourinho wants to work with senior players 
uh, that will probably be on a lot of money. Just that model alone, the players he'd want to bring in to operate at Chelsea would threaten our investment that we've made into young players on long-term contracts. Don't get me wrong, I feel like we need to add one or two senior players in to create a better balance, like many of you guys. Mourinho won't want that. And look, I did go on a bit of a rant on my Instagram yesterday. Again, feel free to follow me at Football Yannick. I said, look, <laughs> Mourinho is not the guy that you bring on going, oh yeah, he's the one to unlock Mikhailo Mudrik, who we put loads of money into. Look, he might create this sort of atmosphere of like us against them, but... It's not what we need right now. We don't have the characters to reflect on that. We've got kids, essentially, that need nurturing and need uh, a way to bring out their tactical and technical brilliance. I'm sorry, man. Not only is that just not Jose Mourinho in terms of managerial profile, certainly now more than ever, but he comes inherently with this ego that puts himself in front of the club and often leaves a trail of wreckage behind him. And trust me, we're currently mid-table. We cannot... Was that relegation for us? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Certainly falling in breach of financial fair play. If Mourinho comes in and says, oh, give me this player, this player, this player. It's the only way I demand it. Put them on these wages. We, like, finish, say we win a league, we win the League Cup, he leaves in 18 months, we have to do a massive payoff. those players have lost all their value that we invested in, that cost loads of money, they're on high wages, we can't get rid of them. Then we find ourselves in a position where we've breached financial fair play, profit and sustainability rules. I have on good authority Chelsea are safe for that, but within the space we're currently operating in, and we have to sell a couple of players, we need a coach that's going to be good with young players and is not going to demand uh, senior expensive signings on high money, and also a coach that's performing well recently. I'm sorry, profile-wise, it's a disaster. What history dictates is, it's a disaster. One of my favourite football podcasts, The Football Ramble, they are all laughing at Chelsea, going, oh my god, please let it happen. We deserve this. We deserve that box office. None of them are Chelsea fans, and they all want to watch Chelsea suffer. Like, that's, that's literally where we are right now, you know? Again, no disrespect to Jose Mourinho, I hope he never retires, I hope he goes to loads of clubs where I can watch him and enjoy him, I love the anecdotal stories that you hear from Joe Cole, from Obi Mikel, you know, Lamps, JT, they all love him, I love him for that, I love that period, but it's romanticism, it's reflecting into the past, and with a lot of Chelsea fans, it's been potent revisionism. Look, if Chelsea, in my mind, lose their minds and hire Jose Mourinho and the world of media laughs at us, then, you know, I'll just go on, carry on my job and hope Chelsea win. And if I'm wrong and he becomes the right appointment and Chelsea become a Premier League title winning team again, he stays for five years, clip this up, I will eat my hat, my words, happily. At the end of the day, what comes first, above everyone's opinions and ego, is Chelsea winning, at least if you're a Chelsea fan. But you have to understand and look at the facts and concerns, and I think, I, I feel like people are just so badly down at the moment that they're just thinking, yeah, Jose is this world-class manager and he loves Chelsea and he's all about Chelsea and he's going to make it win, when for the reasons I've stated in this video, that is just simply not the case. Anyway, Drogba seems to think Pochettino is alright. He's more convinced than I am, I must say, and I don't have a simple solution for you, I'm afraid. It's all very well spouting opinions, saying, oh, not him, not him. But, you know, when you say that, you've got to have your own, you know, solution. Is Ruben Amorin still good? Maybe him in the summer. <laughs> We'll see. Anyway, at the moment, I do think it's a personnel uh, problem more than a manager problem. Probably a sporting director hierarchy problem that will need to be addressed at some point should they underperform or keep underperforming rather than a manager problem. And trust me, if you've got all those kind of problems, slam dunky Jose Mourinho in the middle of it is simply not the solution. And if you think it is, give your head a wobble. But I do love you very much. So thank you for joining me. Uh, thank you for subscribing, and of course I'll do a review on the match later, so keep it locked, turn the bell on, peace.